In front of us we have an RTX 3090. It's an MSI Gaming X Trio. So the cooler, by the way, if you don't know, looks like this. It is, uh, in my opinion, way too large for a graphics card. Uh, in my opinion, they're getting a little too big these days, but, you know, that's how, I guess that's how people like them. Anyway, so like I was saying, so this uh, card is, well, I'm a little I'm a little out of my uh, depth fixing this card, if I'm gonna be honest. I'm, uh, well, I, I'm normally, I normally work on GTX 10 series cards, and this is about two generations removed from the stuff that I'm used to working on. So I'm actually learning a lot about this card for the first time, so if I seem like I'm stumbling or I don't know what I'm talking about, it's, well, it's because I don't know what I'm talking about. So, without further ado, let's first check the resistance, resistances across our voltage rails. In particular, we want to check, um, let's just, let's first check for shorts on the base voltages. So this is 12 volts and 3.3 volts from the PCI Express slots, and just 12 volts from the three 8-pin connectors. So, with our multimeter in beep mode, when I probe ground, it beeps. We're gonna first check the PCI Express slot. So, so if you don't know, the first three pins are 12 volts, and if we put our first three pins there, it's fine. Actually, in this case, we, we actually wanna check both sides of the fuse because it's in case there's a blown fuse and it looks good. Then we wanna check 3.3 volts. So you start at this notch, you go left, four pins. So the fourth pin going left is 3.3 volts, and it's fine. Okay, that's a good sign. So now let's check the 12 volts, 12 volts from the external eight pin. So we're gonna check. Okay, so you heard that beep, that's fine because it's, it starts very low and it just keeps increasing. This tells us that 12 volts is good. Also on this eight pin, going on to the next eight pin, fine. Last eight pin, again, it's fine. Okay, so now let's check, let's go to resistance mode and check the actual voltage rails for this card. So first, we exp this is a uh, five volts, and we have a resistance of so forty seven forty eight thousand ohms. That's very very high. Checking the other five volt inductor, we have eight hundred thirteen ohms. I think that's probably high enough. I'm you know if, if this at at the moment we'll just dismiss it as a concern, but you know it's something I want to note. You know I'm not sure if eight hundred ohms is normal given the other one is you know in the forty seven thousand ohm range. So now we want to check 1.8 volts. Two kilo ohms, that's very healthy. Now let's check the memory. Fifty ohms. This looks my impression is that it's healthy. It's a it's a relatively healthy number, so it seems like our GPU might actually still be good. And then whatever this rail is, I'm guessing PCI Express. Six ohms. Oh, that's not that's not a good sign. Well, I mean, well. I don't know if it's a bad sign. I don't know what the resistance of, resistances are supposed to be on RTX 30 series or even RTX 20 series cards. You know, I don't work on them. I'm, like I said, I'm two generations removed from the stuff that I'm, you know, I work on GTX 10 series cards and this is two generations newer than what I am used to working on. So let's go ahead and assume that the GPU is fine because we want to figure, well, this is not my card and the owner wants to know if the card can be made working again. So in this case, the card seems safe to boot. So let's go to voltage mode and let's actually start the card. You may notice that only two of three external 8-pin power connectors are actually connected. For future reference, the correct way you need to have all three 8-pins three connected in order to properly diagnose the card. In this case, however, it does not affect the voltage readings that you're about to see, except for, of course, the missing 12-volt rail. Anyways, so let's get back to the card. So the, the card is on. Let's just check the base voltages one more time. So 12 volts. Yep, 12 volts, yep, and 12 volts, yes. Let's check out 3.3 volts. I have to do this on the back of the card. Yep, 3.3, that's good. So we have our base voltages. So let's see, five volts, uh, we have five volts. Again, the other five volt inductor. Five volts one more time, that's good. 1.8 volts, which we're missing. So, yep, zero like we thought, okay, and of course we won't have anything on memory, and we won't have anything on the GPU, V-Core, and we won't have anything on, I think it's, I think this is the Uncore, the other one, okay. So, the focus for this card is to figure out why we don't have 1.8 volts. So, the 1.8 volt buck converter is actually 
on the back of this card. I don't know its model just yet, but I will figure that out in a moment. So, okay, if we go to the back, go to the back of the card. This is a 1.8 volt. I'm sorry. No, no, no. This is a 1.8 volt buck converter. I'm guessing. So the fo thing to focus on for you know a non-functional, non, -functional, non -uh, like I said, okay, a non-functional buck converter is we want to know what the voltage in is. Actually, so by the marking on the top left, we can tell, it, I think it's an alpha and omega semiconductor chip. So the thing to, fo to look for on a buck converter like this is whether we have voltage in and whether we have enable. So if it's wired like, a, let's say, a GTX 1080 Ti, the enable is sent by some, well, it could be shorted by some P-good signal connected to a 5-volt buck converter while voltage in is probably 12 volts. But of course, you know, I don't, I'm not too sure. I'll have to check, I'll have to take it off and check the pins and trace the connections to get a confirmation on, well, which, uh, w what's, why it isn't turning on. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so like I was saying, the buck converter is an AOZ 2261NQI-11. This is by this is um from Alpha and Omega Semiconductor. I'm not too sure that, that that it's the correct buck converter, but but when I figure out what is the correct buck converter, I will link it in the description. So, anyways, assuming that's the actual buck converter, I check the voltage in pin. The voltage in is, as it turns out, it is actually 12 volts, and in particular, it's this 12 volts. So the fact that this is connected and it was connected before tells us that we have voltage in for our 1.8 volt buck converter. So the next suspect naturally is going to be one our enable signal for our 1.8 volt buck converter. So let me, first let's check the uh, resistance of the well the enable signal the enable enable pin on the back of the card. So I like like I said it's, it's on the back of the card so you can't see it but the was it the resistor that I'm checking it's basically right next to the 1.8 volt buck converter. So let me put, go ahead and put my probe on that resistor. Now you should see, I think 100,000 ohms, roughly speaking. Yep, 100,000 ohms, so <coughs> that's fine. So let's turn on, okay, remember, remember, you may remember from our 1080 Ti video that we had a high resistance on our 1.8 volt enable signal for our one, sorry, no, our, no, we had the, yeah, we had a high resistance on our on the enable signal for our 1.8 volt buck converter, but when we turned the card on, it dropped to 112 ohms. In this case, however, when we measure the resistance of the said resist of our enable signal while the card is on, it is still in the hundred. It is in the 86,000 ohm range. So, I think is that what it says? Yes, yes, it is. So we can see that it's not necessarily being short. And now, if we go to the uh, voltage reading, and we check the voltage of our enable signal for 1.8 for our 1.8 volt buck converter. We see, you'll see that it's zero. Hold on, let me do that again. So the probe is on the resistor. Zero. So we're missing enable. This is confirmation. We have confirmation of why our 1.8 volt buck converter doesn't turn on, and that's because we have no enable signal on the buck converter itself. So I don't know where this maps to. On a 1080 Ti, you know the SE EVJ that I fixed earlier. It mapped to a 5 volt buck converter. Um, in this case, I'm not too sure if it does or, or where it goes, actually. I, I have to figure it out. But what I do, I will be back to show you what I find. Okay, so I've been poking around the card, and I think I've more or less figured out why we don't have 1.8 volts. I, I'm sorry, the enable signal for our 1.8 volt buck converter. So, as it turns out, or at least I'm, okay, I'm, I'm not too sure, but I'm at the moment, I'm assuming this uh, IC over here. U212. Hold on, let me just adjust the camera. Okay, so I'm assuming that U212 is responsible for generating the enable signal for our 1.8 volt buck converter. Okay, so I okay the marking on this um, item is so this chip is SJ. It's either SJ or RS, depending on whether which way you read it. So I'm guessing I don't I, because I can't find a data sheet and I can't find out what this is. I'm going to make an assumption. I'm going to make the assumption that what you see in front of you, U212, is a logical AND gate, meaning that it takes two input voltages, which we'll call A and B, and it will output a voltage on um, on another pin if and only if both input voltages are present. If one is missing, it won't output anything, or it, or if both are missing, it still won't output anything. So. 
my guess is as follows. Assuming this is a logical AND gate, I would say that the top left pin is our out output. In fact, this is the 1.8 volt enable signal. So this is our output. Now I can tell you for certain that the top right pin is actually ground. So that we know. The bottom right pin is I'm get is one of our inputs. If you and this actually, you know, the bottom right pin is actually connected to the P good for one of our two five volt buck converters. Now, this particular um, you know, IC is missing two voltages. It's missing the middle right pin and the bottom left pin. The bottom left pin, as far as I can tell, powers the IC, and the middle right pin is the of is the second of our two input signals. So. Now, normally, if you have, let's say, two missing voltages, you would assume that you need to find the two sources, the two voltage sources. However, in this IC's case, in this logical AND gates case, case, there's actually only one missing voltage. You see, the bottom left pin, the you know, the power that powers the IC, it's actually connected to the second input by a 10 kilo ohm resistor. So we know that as long as we have one, we should have the other, right? So this begs an important question, which is. You know which one are we actually missing? If only one, you know, if only one pin actually receives power and the other, you know, gets it, you know, sorry, gets its signal, you know, or power through a 10 kilo ohm resistor, which one is supposed to actually have voltage? Now, given that this particular um, IC, I, I will, I'll call it, is present on multiple places on the card, the other ones that are that are present. That receive power, they receive 3.3 volts on the bottom left pin. So we're going to assume that this one also needs 3.3 volts, which means that the middle right pin should have somewhere in the ballpark of like what 2.6, maybe 2.7. Assuming, of course, that three, since the 3.3 volt has to pass through a resistor to move back to this middle right pin, and you know act as an input signal. So, so okay, then of course now we have to figure out why don't we have um, power on the bottom left pin? You know, where did it actually come from? So my best guess currently, I have to move over to the back of the board for this. But my best guess is that it's actually supposed to be from. Let's see if I can get a maybe I can get a good uh, image. Okay, so I believe that it's supposed to come from a component that. I also believe is currently missing. I'm sorry, let me try to stabilize that. So, okay. So I think that we're missing a component, I'm sorry, over here. So in particular, I think the component in question connects to these four pads. This one, this one, this one, and this one. Now, I can, okay, my guess at the, okay, I have a lo I have a lot of assumptions at the moment because I can't figure out what it is. So I've I've tried to find um okay I've looked at PCB photos on the internet and on both Kit Guru's website and the, the review of this card as well as Tech Power Ups uh, review of this card they have a high quality PCB photo on the back and in both of their PCB P PCB photos this component that would sit right here is present. So, okay, this is, of course, this card in front of me, I'm assuming is a retail sample, and I'm also assuming that the at KitGuru and Tech Power, Tech Power Up have a review sample. Despite this, I'm gonna go ahead and say that uh, this is supposed to be here, in either case, even though, so, even though the soda pads don't really look like they're missing anything. So, my reasoning is as follows. So first, let's assume this is the DFN-4 um, package. That's my assumption at the moment. My second assumption is that it's a linear dropout regulator. The reason why I think so is because, okay, remember that we're missing the power inputs for our um, U212, you know, um, 1.8 volt enable signal generator, if you will, right? Well, as it turns out, it's actually this bottom right pin. So this would supply 3.3 volts to turn on that uh, logical AND gate, and by extension, power generates the enable signal we need for our 1.8 volt buck converter, right? So this top right pin, that's ground. This top left pin is um, the P good signal on our 5 volt buck converter. P good signals are often used as enable signals, so this sounds rather like, you know, that we need either a buck converter or a linear dropout regulator here, regulator here. And this bottom left pin connects directly to the 5 volt outputs um, on one of our two 5 volts buck converters. Now. That's not the only reason why I think there's supposed to be a linear dropout regulator here. You also notice that okay, you have these uh, set of capacitors here. Well, these two capacitors sit on the volt on the um, they are they're connected to the 3.3 volt 
power input that we need for our U212 logical AND gates. So we can guess that these are output filtering, right? These two capacitors, as big as and bulky as they are, are connected to the directly to the 5 volt output of one of our two 5 volt buck converters. So we can guess that this is, you know, input filtering for some linear dropout regulator. If you combine all of these assumptions and and some of them facts, by the way, we can take a reasonable guess that we're supposed to have a linear dropout regulator or a buck converter in this package. Now, I searched mauser.com and there are not too many, okay, we're, because we're assuming that we have a 3.3 volt output on this pin and a 5 volt input on this pin, there are not too many um, ICs, linear dropout regulators, that match our descriptions and our pinouts and, well, just what we know and are, are assuming about what would be over here. So. What I've done is I've actually already ordered a few parts off mauser.com based on uh, reading the data sheets and when we, when they get here we're going to try one and we're going to at least even if it's not even if uh, it's not the correct part we're going to at least try to use it to at least diagnose the rest of the card. We may not stress test the card very much with this, you know, alien component if you will here, but it will at least allow us to power on 1.8 volts and then make a determination whether the rest of the card is functional. Okay, so if it wasn't obvious in, the, in one of the previous clips, the reason why I've ordered a slew of compatible parts for what I suspect is our missing component is because I can't find a marking or a part number for what is supposed to be there. So the uh, unfortunately the RTX 3090, okay, so this card, on top of being an RTX 3090 and a Gaming X Trio, you know, it's, it's very expensive and it's currently pretty much unavailable, right? So because of that, I can't get any accurate or good information, and also because it's new, right? So... Because it's rare, I can't get any accurate information on it, and I can't find, I can't figure out at the moment what part is supposed to be on the back of the board to supply power to our logical AND gate. So, at the moment, I want to make a test. I, I want to test that if we actually supply voltage to the power input of our logical AND gates, that we will end up with 1.8 volts. So, just to confirm one more time that the card lacks 1.8 volts, we'll turn the card on. Hold on. We'll turn the card on, and the multimeter on the left will be used to measure voltage. So if we just check, okay, let's just check 5 volts very quickly. Yep. Yep, but 1.8 volts? Missing. Okay, that's good. Let's see, that shows us the card is the same. So, let's turn it back on. Now, the multimeter on the right, however, will be used to supply voltage. So I'm using my spare multimeter, and I've had, I have it set in diode mode. So what will happen is that, at the moment, in diode mode, it supplies a voltage. You can see the 3.2 volt reading on the left. When I'm gonna, st okay, I'm gonna have my red probe, which is connected to the diode multimeter. I'm gonna um, put it onto the power input pin of our U212 logical AND gate, the component that I believe is responsible for gener for generating the enable signal for 1.8 volts. So as you can see, applying it to the uh, pin, it drops the voltage from 3.2 to 2.6. Now, when we turn the card on. It drops again to 1.8, that's okay, it's high enough. And then we, when we measure our 1.8 voltage rail, you can see 1.8 volts on the multimeter on the left. But when I take away my red probe connected to the diode multimeter, it's, it drops to zero. So we know if we apply, at the very least, if we apply 3.3 volts to our, sorry, 3.3 volts to the power input of our logical AND gate, we will have 1.8 volts on the card. So that tells us that it, it, it at least suggests that this is a possible fix, maybe not the proper fix, because we I'm still not that sure that that's what it needs, but it suggests to us that it, at least we can get away, or at least for the time being, we can, well, we can just install a, as long as we supply 3.3 volts to the logical AND gate, we should have 1.8 volts. Okay, so just a quick update. I've asked around on a few websites on what our possible missing component is. So I'm making the assumption, like I said earlier, I made an assumption that it's a linear dropout regulator in the DFN-4 package and that it outputs 3.3 volts. So I'm, assume, I'm also assuming that it's common on many MSI RTX 3000 series cards and much more importantly, 2000 series cards as 2000 series cards are currently much, much more common and much cheaper. So. I asked, I've asked on a website called vlab.su, and a user named Alex Ross has been kind enough to give two suggestions. Now, I want to mention that I take Alex Ross's opinion very seriously. Alex Ross is very, very good at fixing graphics cards. He is much, 
much better than me, and his opinion is by extension worth much more than mine. Well, at the given going off his forum post, his suggestion is that the item that we're missing is either a GS7132, I might be misremembering that, uh, or a UP8806 if the item is analog. Now, the reason why I mentioned this is because I looked at the... Okay, firstly, I can tell you that I can't find a source to buy these items. So, I can't actually use them. But, it doesn't mean that we It doesn't mean that the suggestion is not useful. So, I've looked at the data sheets for both items. They are both linear dropout regulators. This matches our assumption that we're missing a linear dropout regulator. They both output 3.3 volts, or at least have variants that output 3.3 volts. This, again, matches our assumption that we're, we need 3.3 volts on our logical AND gates. And... Much more importantly, they both come in the DFN-4 package. So this is also a very good sign because it matches our assumption. Now, the key insight that the data sheets have, have provided that I could not know earlier was that in both of these data sheets, the linear dropout regulator either outputs 300 milliamps at 3.3 volts or whatever volts that they're designed to output or 500 milliamps. When I ordered a slew of comp compatible components, I picked them because they were in the range of 150 milliamps outputs or 300 milliamps. The fact that both of these components suggested by Electros have can output 300 milliamps or 500 milliamps suggests to me that 300 milliamps is our best bet. So when I get my slew of, com slew of components, I'm going to be using a Toshiba component that outputs 3.3 volts in the DFN-4 package and outputs has an output current of 300 milliamps. So once again, thank you to Electros for providing those two suggestions. Hopefully, when I get those components, we can install them and we'll have, you know, 1.8 volts and possibly everything else. Okay, so I've replaced our missing component with a MIC 5504-3.3YMTTZ. So I couldn't use the Toshiba part that I originally wanted to use because that flew off my desk when I tried to install it. And I couldn't use my replacement Toshiba part because that also flew off my desk. So I've gone with the part um, that you saw listed in on the uh, packaging. In, in, it, in either case, I've also reinstalled the PEX, the buck converter for the PEX rail. So I'm not sure if it'll turn on, but in either case, we'll, we'll find out in a moment. So let's boot the card and let's see if we have at least 1.8 volts. Okay, so first things first, we do have 1.8 volts, we have GPU vCore, memory, but no PEX rail. Actually, let's just check this pin, the one we're supposed to add 3.3 volts to. Yep, 3.3 volts, okay. So, at the moment, okay, we, we're missing the PEX rail, so if you don't know the, I think the correct order for these cards is actually, you know, 5 volts, 1.8 volts. I want to say memory, then GPU, and then our um, PEX rail, but it could be, you know, GPU, then memory, then PEX rail. But in other, other case, we're missing our one volt PEX rail, so this uh, buck converter, um, I think it's a GS9219. I'm not too sure, but I'll have to take it off. So what we want to consider is the voltage in and the enables. Okay. So, as it turns out, the buck converter is a GS9216. I can't get a complete data sheet for this, so I'm assuming it has a similar pinout and, and electrical, electrical characteristics as a GS9238. So, like we said, you know, like I mentioned before, we have to consider both voltage in and enable. So, for enable, this is the second pin. So, I'm going to have to, this will be a little bit difficult for me to measure, but let's see if I can get it. Okay, now let's turn the card on. 1.2 volts, I'm not sure how well you can see, 1.2 volts. Okay, actually also, while we, while, while we have the card on, let's check voltage in. 12 volts, okay. So, I've read the data sheet for GS9238, and of course I'm assuming GS9216 follows the same logic as the GS9238, so on GS9238, Enable is only considered high if we have 1.6 volts or higher. So in this case, since we have 1.2 volts, we can take a guess that we, okay, we, of course we get enable, but it's not high enough. So maybe, you know, we have some damaged transistor or resistor or something is going on and that it's not supplying enough voltage and or current or whatever to our, you know, enable pin on our GS9216. 
Now I've checked the since okay if GS nine two one six by the way is also um used okay on the reference twenty eighty RTX twenty eighty it's used for both the PEX rail and the one point eight volt buck converter. So on both so on on the one RTX twenty eighty I have I have on both the um GS nine two one sixes the enable signal is either three point three volts or three point two volts. So we can guess that we we're, we actually are about two volts short on our enable signal. So I have to go trace the circuits. When I figure it out, well, you see, you'll probably see it in a moment. What's wrong with the card? Okay, so I've been digging around on the uh, card a little more, and I found out what the enable signal for our one volt PEX rail what it connects to. So I'm not sure if you can see, but there is a resistor over here. Now on this card, it's eight kilo ohms, and that's well for an enable signal that's a little high. So I'm going to show you on camera what the enable signal is before and after the sorry before and after the resistor so remember that I said it earlier that in, on the RTX 2080 we I got um 3.3 volts on both GS 9216s I think I think that's the model anyways so in that because we have you know 3.3 volts on our 2080 on both buck converters for the enable we expect to get roughly you know 3.3 volts on this one well what with the cut on I'm going to go ahead and measure Jesus Christ, these cables are awful. I'm gonna go ahead and measure the resistance, so not resistance, the voltage on both sides so you can see it on camera. Okay, with the card on, let me go ahead and uh, put my probe on one end of the resistor. This is the, um, this is before the resistor. So, turning the card on, you should see 3.3 volts. Yep, and going on to the other side, we should get about 1.2. So we can see that uh, we can take a guess that we have a resistor that's gone bad. So eight kilo ohms is well, I don't think it's what it's supposed to be. So I'm going to go ahead and take off that resistor, and then I'm going to install a new one, and I'm going to I'm going to use a zero ohm resistor, and we're going to see if the card is in you know better condition. Okay, so I've changed the eight kilo ohm resistor on the back. Um, I changed it to a one kilo ohm resistor. No, sorry, not a one kilo, zero ohm resistor. So. Let's go ahead and boot the card and let's see if we have, you know, if if the card performs any better. So checking our one volt PEX rail, we have 200 millivolts. That's too low, definitely too low. Okay, actually let's let's check that enable signal one more time. Checking that resistor on the back after the resistor. 3.3 volts. Okay. Okay, so okay, so we have enable and we have voltage in. The next best guess is we have a bad buck converter, but let's not jump to conclusions. We could also, we could also have a problem with our feedback circuits, though. I don't know. I'm not too sure what to think at the moment. So let's go ahead and check the VCC pin on our one volt buck converter. So this is this is gonna be a little bit difficult for me to measure. So I'll have to block your view, but you will at least be able to read the measurement on the multimeter. Okay, starting the card about now. 3.8 volts. Okay, so I have to, I'm not too sure what to think of this. Unfortunately, you know, like I said earlier, I don't have a data sheet for GS9216. I'm going off the data sheet of a GS9238. and. On the data sheet for GS9238, if the VCC is less than 4.15 volts, it's, it's supposed to be 5 volts, and if it's less than 4.15, um, the card triggers under voltage lockout. So, in this case, since since I don't know what I'm what to do, unfortunately, since you know I don't have a data sheet and there's no definitive definite answer here, I'm just gonna go ahead and change the uh, buck converter itself to a known working part from a dead RTX 2070. Let me go ahead and do that and we'll see, hopefully we'll have, you know, a working card. So I've replaced the buck converter with a known working part. It hasn't changed anything, it's still 200 millivolts, so I went. I then went ahead and focused on VCC. As you may, may remember, VCC was 3.8 volts. VCC, sorry, VCC connects to a resistor about over here. On this card it was 3 kilo ohms. I'm not sure if this is the correct value, but on the other side of the resistor, it was 5 volts from one of these two 5 volt outputs. So I went ahead and took the guess that 
in this case now VCC is actually supposed to be an input from another voltage rail and I change the 3 kilo ohm resistor to 0 ohms to 0 ohms to be just in case I didn't say clearly the first time so if we boot the card and we check the PEX rail we now have 986 millivolts and if we look at the splash screen the bio splash screen we have well a monitor I should say we have a bio splash screen so the card is now in a bootable state as you might be able to guess I'm not too happy with this repair well to me repair means taking a card that's broken replacing faulty components with the component that's supposed to be there you know the correct buck converter or correct resistor with the correct resistance values and or made by the correct company and what and whatever right the reason why I do this is because I want the cards that I fix to last for years and the reality is that in this case because we have a you know a nearly released card no we okay ampere is nearly released at the time of this video it's it's been out for I think three four months now perpetually out of stock here in the states you know, this is also a three thousand dollar card you're looking in front of you. So it's it's already rare because it's Ampere, and then it's even rarer because it's three thousand. You know, pushing three thousand dollars. You know, assuming you can get one nil. So because it's because it's so rare, I can't get any good information out of it. So I've had to guess what kind of um, LDO we have on the other side of the board. You remember the missing components? I don't feel too bad about that. What I feel awful about is the fact that I've had to change two resistors without any reference of what their values are supposed to be. Supposed to be. So remember, I changed the enable resistor based on the fact that the enable pin was 1.2 volts when on other GS9216s, on other cards, you know, my 2080 and my 2070, it's 3.3 volts. I've also changed the VCC resistor from 3 kilo ohms to 0 ohms based on the idea that the VCC in this case is supposed to be an input and not an output and that it's I know it's supposed to be 5 volts but I'm assuming it's an input so at the current at you know for the time being this is about as good as I can do you know like I said I don't have the proper information to properly repair this card so when I when, you know when I upload this on you when you see this on YouTube it'll be called a repair but it'll be repair in quotation marks if YouTube allows quotation marks in their title. Anyways, like I said earlier, this is the best I can do with the information that I have currently. I'm not, you know, stuff like this is, okay, I, I notice in the comment sections that people often ask if I will take their repair, you know, their dead card and try to repair it, you know. I, uh, this is why I don't take the other people's cards. You know, when, when you take someone else's card, you have a responsibility to them. Unfortunately, in this case, you know, I can't, I can't properly restore this card, or at least know if what, what the proper restoration would be you know this is why i buy my own dead graphics cards because if i kill a card you know through my own idiocy or whatever then that's on me right it's my card no problem it's my money this card you know like i said earlier is probably between two to three thousand dollars working and it's not my card because you know it's not my card somebody was nice enough to send me this card and i'm not sure that this thing will even last a couple months Okay, so as you can see, I have the uh, 3090 running a game at the moment. It's been running it for about 15 minutes, which at the moment is, well, that's about as far as I'm going to push it. I'm going to turn it off in a, in a, after this video ends. So I'm, I'm running at X8 3.0 at the moment. This is actually a bottleneck, but I don't, you know, I don't really care. My, uh, I don't have a CPU that's fast enough to run a 3090. So anyways, if you look at the uh, cell clocks and the power consumption and temperature, everything looks good. The one thing you might notice is that it consumes uh, very close to 400 watts, which I think is just insane. You know, these Ampere cards, they're uh, getting a little too big and they use a little too much power for my personal taste. And, well, I don't. Th I think maybe I'll just be skipping Ampere for something more efficient. But anyways, so, actually one thing I want to note is that you might have heard those beeps when we um, booted the card earlier. If you look at the sub-vendor, you know, the, we can see that it says EVJ when we clearly have an MSI card in front of us. You know, if you don't know, this card was at one point, uh, power, well, on top of being um, presumably power modded, it was, um, used to set benchmarks in, uh, I think, Fire Strike or Time Spy or whatever, you know, under liquid nitrogen. So, you know, this was a extreme overclocking card at one point, owned by some YouTube channel. Anyways, so, in either case, though, if you, um, I have to ask that you consider a like and subscribe, you know, these... Every card that I fix, I have to buy them, well not every card, but for most of the cards that I fix, I buy them one by one, except for of course this one. 
and as you can imagine, um, these cards they can be rather risky. In this case, this you know this card is still risky, just not for me. But in, anyways, in either case, uh, I'd like to say you know you know thank you for watching this video if you made it all the way this you made it this far, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.